Today, we're going to be talking about how we're all in training for something good for God's kingdom. So let's get started. Welcome to The Bold Encourager. I'm Rebecca. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you're new to my channel, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything. It just allows for me to get my positive, encouraging messages out to everyone. So today we're going to be talking about how we're in training and it's going to be totally different from how I did it previously in the past two episodes. I felt like it was a little too rigid. I want the Holy Spirit to have some movement here right and flex i want to be flexible and unpredictable here with the holy spirit because he's a river he's rushing through and he's going to make this a powerful message he's speaking through me i'm just the messenger <laughs> so let's get into prayer Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for your blessings and how you really showed me how to do not get distracted, how to not let the things of this world get me down, Lord Father. I know who I am in you in Jesus' name. I have an identity through Christ. I know that I am called. I am chosen by you. I am your daughter. And I thank you for these blessings. And I pray you bless those that are watching today. Lord, I just pray anointing and power in their lives. Lord Father, I pray that we see revivals break through in our families and we see healing in our families. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray the power of the Holy Spirit thrives in us and that we wake up every day giving you the glory. May we go glory to glory every single day. Lord Father, we thank you for these things. May we be like the Acts Church in the upper room, Lord. Let's bring it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I know everybody's busy, like I said before, in the summer and everything. So it means a lot to me that you've taken the time to watch these videos. And thank you so much. So let's go ahead and get into it. Psalm 119, 33 through 40 message. God, teach me lessons for a living so I can stay the course. Give me insight so I can do what you tell me. My whole life, one long obedient response. Guide me down the road of your commandments. I love traveling this freeway. Give me an appetite for your words of wisdom and not for piling up loot. Divert my eyes from toys and trinkets. Invigorate me on the pilgrim way. Affirm your promises to me, promise made to all who fear you. Deflect the harsh words of my critics, but what you say is always so good. See how hungry I am for your counsel. Preserve my life through your righteous ways. And so the section that we just read is called He, and it is actually the, the fifth letter of the Hebrew alphabet. I don't know if I'm saying it right, but the sound is H, I guess. <laughs> And the word he has three meanings. The first is here is, as in the verse, here is seed for you. The next is to be disturbed, behold, and beholding revelation. So what we can see is here is, here is the seed that is planted by God, right? Here is God. He's, he's in the midst. As we're reading through those verses, he's trying to train us in the way that we live. Then the, that to be disturbed, are we disturbed by the things of God? Or are we disturbed by the things of the enemy? And so that is beholding revelation there. We need to behold the revelation of God in our lives, not the revelation of Satan. So let's get it straight. <laughs> and let's talk about this, right? So the fear of the Lord is the foundation of wisdom. If we want to go through training, if we want to truly be soldiers for the Lord, we have to have wisdom and understanding. As we were reading through those verses, that's what I got from that. We need to go the distance. So you're like, God, why are these things happening in my life? Why is it so crazy right now? But guess what? Training is happening. If things were easy in your life, you would not be prepared for what's next. You would not be prepared for what is God going to do next in your life? What's God going to do on this earth? We will not be ready. So let's be ready for this training. And I'm, I'm saying this because I had gone away from working out 
I had gotten out of practice. I went to visit my sister and my mom and my nephew were there. And we went to, um, well, actually it was just me and my sister worked out with her future husband. And what I got from it was I was so like, my body was so worked out. Like I, I was so out of shape because I hadn't worked out so long. And I was just doing this intermittent fasting and not working out, pulling weights, thinking that was a workout. What was I thinking? But the thing that came to mind was after I had worked out, I, it took three days to recover. And I was thinking that is the way we are living our lives as Christians. We're going to church on Sunday and we're getting this really intense workout with service, right? Then we leave church on Sunday and then we are so out of shape by the time we get to church next Sunday. And sometimes we don't go to church every Sunday, right? Um, if you don't have like ongoing Bible studies throughout the week, I do. Uh, I, I make it a practice to take time with the Lord, get more of the word in. If you're not getting that training in, guess what? The enemy comes, you fall flat on your face. You're not ready for it. You are getting to the point I couldn't walk for th <laughs> I couldn't walk for three days because that it, that intense training was so hurt so bad I couldn't even walk and that's where we're getting to at, at this point as Christians we're so out of training mode that we have lost touch with what God's trying to do in our lives so when he's preparing us to get ready for the next mission the purpose he's called us for we're not ready we're not ready. So we have to take in this training. We have to understand that it is important not to get distracted in the training and really live. Sorry, I'm getting really heated, <laughs> but it's a good heated to let you know that the importance of this training. And so let us not be distracted by, I just put money in diamonds because it just had a nice little bling to it, but let us not get distracted by the things of the world. Let's enjoy the life that God has given us, the simple life, the things we just need are just what it is, right? But when we get so drawn out by, I need, I want this and our wants and our desires sometimes overrule, and we get to a point where if we don't have these material things, like we get materialistic, we almost start to be drawn away from God. We get drawn away from God because those materials become our idols and they become more important than God. And so the thing is, it starts to control you. And guess what? You have turned your head. It's like if, if you're, you know, you have a spouse and you, you were checking someone out. That's what we're doing to God. We're looking at those the money and everything. And I'm not talking just like when you have a fixation on material things. I'm also going to say it when we are worried about our money troubles, then that becomes more important than God. When you, when you're so fixated on your finances and you're like bothered by it. And I'm telling you this cause I'm going to give you a little example of my life and, and come, come forth and confess to you what, what I was struggling with. So um, a, you know, a couple weeks ago we had, my husband's friend was in town and I was excited. So, and we were, he was excited too. Cause I like having people over and everything. And I was, we were getting ready for it. And so, um, when we were working in the yard and everything, we were trying to cut, we were cutting, like we were pulling the weeds and stuff. But then I saw like this big branch off the tree. And this is as big as another tree trunk. Let's just be real. And it was teetering and it was going to fall off. So I was like, okay, well, I need to, um, I need to tell my husband. So he, he looked at it and he's like, okay. So he, he, he came up with the idea. He was going to take it and rip it off with, um, uh, a rent a wrench. And I was, I was afraid. I was so afraid that it was going to fall in the window, break the window and everything. And I was like, Lord, please, please, <laughs> please let it not break. And so Thank, thank God it did not break the window. It fell perfectly when he wenched it off with the truck and a wench. And, you know, so I didn't need to worry, but I did worry. Because I was thinking about finance. I was like, well, how much is it going to cost to fix that? And so then another situation came up that same week. A couple of days later, we had 20 roof shingles fall off our roof. They were like completely 
like winded off. Like the wind came and blew them away. I think it was like a wind tunnel or something. It was weird. And we were like, we heard this big thud. We go out there and we're like, what the heck? But thankfully, my husband got up there and I'm sitting there worried like, what is it going to cost to fix that, Lord? Why is these things happening? <laughs> thankfully, my husband got up on there and fixed it. Now, if that wasn't enough, <laughs> one of our bigger, it wasn't a huge payment, but it was one of the bigger payments, double charged us. And um, I was like, and it, and it literally took weeks to fix the issue. And I'm, I can't tell you, I was stressing the whole way through. I'm like, and I was flying out to see family and I was concerned about that. And I, you know, it's just like, wasn't thinking about how that was distracting my mind and how I was letting it. So that, even in that situation, I was making money an idol because I was worried about our financial situation when I wasn't, and I wasn't giving it to God. So even in those situations, you know, I did confess and I did ask for forgiveness, but it, it can be as simple as that. It can be simple as that. So then another thing, don't let the things the world says about you control your mind. Like, think about it. If they're talking bad about Christians, we kind of like, we go, oh, I don't want them to say that about me. And then we, and sometimes you see some Christians actually compromising, right? And, and the thing about it is even if they come to you and they start attacking you, you say you're a Christian. Well, why did you do this? Why did you do that? And I mean, they, some people know you from high school. They're like, Hey, I, you say you're a Christian girl. I saw what you did in high school, but let's, let's just point something out here. You are not your past. Your identity is in Christ, right? Your future is in an eternity in heaven and people will always be critical of you. This is coming from a people pleaser and I have found there's nothing you can do and I've tried everything in my life to make people happy, but they will still be critical of you. And so you can't put so much emphasis on their words because they, that then becomes an idol and it distracts you from your purpose that God has laid out for you. And our hunger for God's word is goes it's way above what the world says about us, right? If we remember who he's called us, he has called us chosen. He has called us his children. He has called us for greater things. He has, he formed us. He planned out our plans before we were even born in our mother's womb. And that's how much he, we mean to him. And so when we get so stirred up and distracted by what other people say that world says about us, we put more emphasis on what they say than what God says. And I've learned this my whole life because I'm a people, I was, I'm a recovering people pleaser. And I've learned to not let what people say about me affect the way that I like get into the time with God. Because once you do, it starts to stir something up and it will take your time away from God. And so let's read on. I'm, I'm, I'm on one right now because the Holy Spirit's got me excited, but Psalm 119, 41 through 48 message. Let your love, God, shape my life with salvation. Exactly as you promised. Then I'll be able to stand up to mockery because I trusted your word. Don't ever deprive me of truth. Not ever your commandments are, are what I depend on. Oh, I'll guard my life with what you revealed to me. Guard it now. Guard it ever. And I'll strive freely. Freely. Through wide open spaces. As I look for your truth and your wisdom, then I'll tell the world what I find. Sp speak out boldly in public, unembarrassed. I cherish your commandments. Oh, how I love them. Relishing every fragment of the counsel. And so this section is called Vav. And it's actually um, looks like Wa, but it's the sixth letter of the Hebrew alphabet, the sound V O U and U, <laughs> and hook and peg is what it means, but it, it also is something dependable, like how we can depend on God's word. A hook is something that holds two things together. So that means that we connect the spiritual and the physical, we bring them together. And if a man is connected on high on heaven, he doesn't fall down below. So we need to be connected to heaven that way. When we hook onto God, when we peg him, when we get to the point where our spiritual and physical come together, we will not fall flat on our face because we're like, we're stationed, we're ready. We're ready for what God has next for us. So 
let us be hooked on God. And so the verse, the, the verse has really inspired me. So I came up with these little things, but let God's love shape your life with salvation. Ignore the haters, the mockers, right? The people that talk about you behind your back, ignore them because God's love is shaping us. It forget the lies from the past. Forget what people said about it. They call me a people pleaser. They called me a codependent. They call me all kinds of things, right? They called me stupid, ugly, everything you can think in the book. Who cares what they said? Because there are lies from the enemy. And he uses people, unfortunately, to get at us. And so we're distracted by what those lies are. We forget that love, God's love, shapes who we are. He shapes who we are. It's salvation that makes us who we are. And so whenever the haters come at you, put on your little earmuffs because what they say does not matter. We need to walk in freedom. Walk in freedom freedom. We were called to be free, set free from bondage. And we're not walking in freedom. We're not using our salvation. What a gift, great gift it is. We're being tied down by the past. We're being tied down by the things that have kept us crippled, the sins, the things of the shame that we've experienced in our life. And so I want to use this illustration. It's like when we put a backpack on and we, we put like boulders of rocks inside and we're carrying it around and we're walking around thinking, okay, it's so heavy, Lord. It's so heavy. He's like, give it to me. Give me that dang on book, <laughs> the backpack. And we're still holding on it like, no, Lord, I can't let it go. It's like a security blanket. Well, guess what? Do you want to walk in freedom or not? Let it go. Let it go. And so he's just trying to pull that heavy backpack off you, but you won't let it go. I've been there before. Trust me. <laughs> and it's so much freeing when you let it go because um, you feel this peace that nobody else can give you. Only Jesus can. And so let's walk in the freedom of our salvation. Last point, be bold. You've been called for great things. We're all called for something really great. We have a big purpose. Let's tell everybody about Jesus. Let's not be ashamed of the gospel. We're called to spread the gospel, every person. And that is a, it's, it's a huge calling. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what age you are. It doesn't matter where you are in your walk. You have been called for something great. You have a unique calling. God's called you. Do not let the enemy lie to you. He's trying to take you out of the out of the ringing. He's trying to take you out of the the focus. He's trying to say, "Okay, you're not you're not qualified to do this." Go guess what you are. You are. You're living or breathing, aren't you? God's not done with you yet. So, do not be afraid to speak out and tell the truth and tell the gospel. God is calling you for great things. And so I hope you really enjoyed this message. Um, let's go ahead and if you are come on here and you're not saved, I highly encourage you. You don't know what happens going to happen tomorrow. You don't know what your outlook is for tomorrow. This is your time to walk in freedom. So if you come on here, you're not saved or you've walked away from God, say this prayer with me. It's just between you and God and I won't even have to know, but let's let's say it. Dear Father God, I know I'm a sinner. I confess with my mouth that I believe Jesus Christ shed his blood on the cross and died for my sins. Forgive me now and fill me with your Holy Spirit. I accept Jesus Christ as a Lord and Savior of my life. I turn my life over to you, dear God, and thank you for this gift of salvation. Help me to lead a life that is pleasing to you from this day forward. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now let's close out in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for the blessing of telling everybody about what it is to walk in freedom, Lord Father, to be shaped by your love. I pray that we live it, Lord. We pray, I pray that we really go into the world and just speak the gospel and be bold and not be worried about what the world says about us and know our identity in Christ and know that you have made us a new creation and that we are beyond our past we've got that's not who we are anymore we are not that person we are chosen for something so great may we live it may we conquer it may we be those soldiers that you've called us to be in jesus mighty name amen well i hope you enjoyed this message and if you did please don't forget to like share comment and subscribe all of it helps me out so much and it doesn't cost you a thing also 
If you haven't followed me on social media, please follow me on social media. The links will be down below. And if you haven't hit that notification bell yet, please hit that notification bell. It lets you know whenever I post these videos. Also, I post videos throughout the week. So you don't want to miss them. So go ahead and hit that notification bell. Well, I hope you have an amazing day. And I hope you stay encouraged.